Hello, my name is Sara Gelve. I work for a Belgian association, an adult education provider, working in the field of French as a foreign language. I have a follow-up comment on what was being said about uh, European funding and administration burden. What actually happened because of this administration burden is that um, companies, associations, organ uh, organizations that are not the most competent in the field are getting the funding because they know how to prepare the application. That's the reality. We see this a lot in our, in our, in our field. Uh, we see a lot of digital uh, fancy application for migrants that are do not, I mean, are not square right, that they don't have uh, basic skills, and they should be able to fall, to follow a MOOC, which is impossible. <laughs> So, I don't think we can solve the situation here, right now, here, but that's the reality. The, the, the local level sometimes struggle to, to get involved, and other actors that are very good at other things uh, get the funding. And what is the result? This is something that we don't need. And it's not used, actually. And then a follow-up question for Mr. Bonvoisin uh, about, uh, uh, you said that you organize training for uh, trainers. And would be I would be interested in understanding how I mean how you tailor your training because based on the different final public it can be uh, students it can be I guess elderly it can be migrants and so on how you tailor it and uh, that would be something that would be interesting for us for example thank you okay thank you I let you answer but maybe briefly and then maybe you can discuss for that thoroughly more. Um, Working part, but yes, please. Um, we consider that media literacy is uh, something transversal to uh, every uh, topics and uh, every uh, final public, except some uh, aspect linked to the age of people. So we are mainly there is no a discipline. I uh, also say that um, we are not teacher of digital uh, in Belgium. Uh, but everybody use it in this uh, uh, teaching situation, so we use that uh, for uh, for trying to to uh, um, uh, to um, raising the awareness uh, on uh, on the numeric uh, topic. So we we do it, but uh, we cannot be too specific because uh, we are we will break. Uh, all the, the field of the social actors by the, the kind of skills, the uh, elf, the, the, the elf uh, workers or the social workers or the librarian workers or the, the cultural workers, you know. We need to, to find what uh, everybody needs, in fact, that, but it's not easy. And sometimes we do s uh, some training very specific to very specific demands. By instance, uh, working with migrants, it's very specific. So we work with them and we develop some uh, specific training. Okay, this will be the last <laughs> question for this part. Hey, I'm Alexia. I work for. Um, I was duly uh, at the GG employment in the Commission. I'm. Uh, partly responsible for upscaling pathway and I just wanted to maybe to add on what Philippe says um, upscaling pathway is not only for workers that's fake news <laughs> I'm not talking about fake news <laughs> no I mean that's uh, nothing against that of course but uh, I just wanted to say that that's precisely the initiative in the skills agenda that was concerning the whole of other learning and not only continuing that and um, and it's true that uh, you know, and I I don't really believe there is a real dichotomy between skills for jobs and skills for life. I think it's a, a bit of an artificial um, a distinction that sometimes we uh, as policymakers do because uh, you know it's also a matter of how you organize ministries, etc. But but if you learn for life, you learn for job and 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 vice versa. But there is actually a real risk that uh, adult learning for life actually disappears. I mean, I was just working on Denmark and saying that there are budget cuts for folk high schools. I mean, it's a land of Grunweg, right? So it's it's really worrying. But we at the commission, I, I really wanted to say that we don't forget about skills for life. 
and that's also an everyday um, struggle, believe us, in, <laughs> in our work. And, um, and talking about this, I mean, because Julie mentioned the individual learning accounts, I mean, then you will see it appear a lot, uh, probably in the upcoming debates, but that, that's also something that is presented as, um, you know, financial incentive for, um, for continuing VET, I mean, only for skills for jobs. But actually, I mean, when you see the French example, uh, most the, I mean, when you look at statistics, what low skills adults undertake, finance with this kind of accounts, it's uh, actually um, basic skills and, um, and IT and languages. So, you know, it's, it's um, a financial incentive that is designed uh, that member states think is going to improve their skills mismatches and, you know, improve their economic prospects and everything. But that's really, that's really a tool to empower people. And I think and that, that uh, is very well shown by the fact that people actually chose training that mattered to them, so it may be vocationally oriented, but I think it's very positive that they take training in basic digital skills with these kind of schemes, because it's really, it really shows that it's also IT skills for life. So, so yeah, maybe these schemes can be interesting when we speak about financial incentive, because that's indeed uh, le nerf de la guerre, hein? it's, it's crucial for basic uh, digital skills. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to, to respond to that? Or, uh, yes? <laughs> okay, but please keep it short. Uh, I do keep it short. Thank you for putting me, getting me right. Uh, um, the thing is that in, in when you look at what's made out of the recommendation, you don't really see people who are not in the labor market in it. It's even if the intention is to, to go beyond it. So that's a bit what I try to, to bring. Maybe it is a bit less fake news than, than saying that it's not intended for it. It's probably intended for, 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 for more than just the labor market. But uh, yeah. And also, well, um, I agree that there's a false dichotomy between skills for the job and skills for life. Uh, it's just that the systems that provide skills are often geared towards uh, addressing workers. So now I talk about trainings that you can access via, um, via employment services, for example. When you're no longer a job seeker because you're no longer of the age of being a job seeker, you cannot access training financed by your <coughs> job center. So th those are structures that, uh, that, are, that, that make that past a certain age these services are unavailable and you have to look for other services that do exist, like the folk universities and things like that, um, that do exist when they exist, where, they, where you are, and. In, in the member state you are, um, but it's a different kind and it's uh, often much less professionalized, much less, um, yeah, I, I don't want to say formal because it's probably not for informal, but uh, it, it doesn't have the same status. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I would suggest to wrap up uh, the debate um, here. Uh, we will uh, have another round of um, questions and discussion afterwards, because uh, now what we would like to do is actually to share with you our experience uh, of uh, creating a digital competence development system. And this um, experience uh, was exactly in response uh, the, to the upskilling pathways, and it was actually cited as one of the examples of uh, implementation uh, in the Commission document uh, reviewing the implementation of the upskilling uh, pathways recommendation. Uh, and um, actually there were quite a few very valuable lessons out of uh, this experience uh, because uh, it uh, really uh, tries to, to cover different aspects uh, of, uh, of this, this uh, skills uh, development uh, and create uh, really a comprehensive uh, system uh, including uh, validation, uh, including uh, training, validation, etc. Uh, so, but I would really like you to ask you to stay <laughs> conscious and attentive because I would really like to to have your active participation also in the the second round of uh, discussion um, after the presentations. Um, yeah, I think you can. If, however, you feel comfortable, you can go yeah back to your pieces, and I would like.